Welcome to another episode of Around the 412. We are part of the PodHub Network. I'm Tyler, and with me as always are Smitty and Herb. What's up, guys? Yo, we are back. A uh, little bit longer of a layoff because last week we did the show on Thursday. Oh, yeah. We I completely going, forgot we were in Altoona. We were going to Altoona for my birthday to see, see our boys Jared and Bly play. So, um, had a really good birthday. Um, good birthday weekend. Lost uh, a lot of money at the casino the next night. Um, but... Yeah, so we're back after a little bit longer delay, and talk about coming back with a bang. Uh, we are here with the Pirates' latest first-round pick that makes it three in a row that we've gotten to come on here and introduce themselves to the fan base. So, Pirate fans, say hello to Quinn Priester. Quinn? What's up, Quinn? Yeah, hey, how are you? <laughs> Sorry, we, we didn't really give you that good of a cue to no, like yeah. <laughs> say hello oh, or that's something. So worried. I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> no. it was, hot I was mic, hot mic. Something, but then it's I was like, I don't want to take anyone's. Yeah, my no, bad. it's all I good. What's up, guys? That's per- that honestly that 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 defines the show right there. So that was the perfect way to come in. Yeah, yeah, and and don't worry about like saying something. We'll we'll just stop talking because you're more important than we are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. I did. I just wanted to create a little suspense there. Right. <laughs> there you go. I like there it. There you go. Yeah, okay. So, um, like I said, we are going to ask you some questions. Uh, we had some pretty good input from our uh, Twitter followers here to get some questions. So, we'll ask those ones first, and then I'll ask you the ones that I compiled. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. first, uh, our boy Tyler, when did getting drafted out of high school seem like a real possibility? Um, so, I kind of started to think about it uh, at the beginning of last summer to where I was getting invited to a bunch of the big events around and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of just kind of becoming reality to where, okay, well, I'm getting, uh, you know, this recognition as, as being one of the top players here and, um, you know, just put, working my, you know, butt off and trying to, uh, you know, just prove myself at those events. And then once, you know, I felt like I was part of that pack, I thought, you know, it was a possibility that I definitely could be, be a high school, uh, you know, draft pick. Right. Cool. Cool. Um, I do have like a follow-up question, but that's actually one of my own. So we'll, we'll save that for a little bit later. So Mike um, wants to know, what was the first MLB game attended? And what do you remember most about that? What was my first MLB game I attended? Yes. I think. So the one I remember the most was uh, my grandma and grandpa um, both took, or took me and my sister and then another one of my cousins uh, to Cubs Phillies game at Wrigley. And the main thing I remember about that is eating a ton of hot dogs. <laughs> it's also a hell of a I place can to relate. Start. You'd fit right in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dollar Dog Night at PNC Park's a big fan of ours. Yeah. <laughs> when they have enough. When they have enough. <laughs> Sometimes they yeah. run out of buns, but we don't talk about that. No. <laughs> um, okay, so our friends at North Shore 9, do you think playing multiple sports helped you develop into the pitcher that you are today? Absolutely. So um, I think, you know, being able to, you know, be athletic, do multiple sports, I think it kept me healthy as well as, you know, creating and making me a better athlete. And, um, you know, it always did provide that, uh, you know, reassurance as well to where it's like, you know, after, you know, halfway through, you know, towards the end of every football season, I knew just I was ready to get back uh, to baseball. And so it also provided me with like, that reassurance that, man, like I, I love baseball. It's my passion. That's what I want to do with life. But I loved every second of playing football and, and um, you know, with my best friends from home and being able to, you know, just experience that and experience that sport for what it was. I think it definitely helped with be- helping me become the pitcher I am today. Right, cool. Yeah, so you switched from quarterback to wide receiver your senior year, right? Yes, sir. Is that was that in part to being like you just didn't want to put any more pressure on your shoulder football wise? You like kind of knew football or baseball was your passion, or? I mean, to be perfectly honest, like um, it was more because I was missing so much in the summer, and mm. I, like my coach completely understood. Uh, he was, you know, com- like we were, had a lot of good conversations about it, and. You know, it was like, hey, you're not uh, going to be here as much as we, we want you necessarily in the summer. So I think a, a position change from quarterback to, you know, maybe playing a little bit of wide receiver and then also maybe some defensive back could help the team a little bit better. And I just wanted to win, so I was all for it. Uh, speaking of football, um, how hard was the decision between picking a sport, really? Um, you know, the only, it wasn't really that as hard as, as it might seem. 
I loved football. I loved, you know, my buddies who were playing with me, or I was playing with them, really. But, um, you know, it was it was quite an easy decision to just make the decision to play football. The only thing that was difficult was hearing a lot from even, you know, some family members, friends, you know, even outside people who, you know, were kind of questioning myself and questioning my parents on, on why I was even doing it and risking so much. But um, obviously in the end it worked out and I wouldn't have done it any differently. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask, was how tough was that decision uh, for you or I guess the people around you as well for uh, choosing to play football with a lot of outside noise? Because I, I – did a little like research and I saw an article saying that you for sure were going to play football your senior year. And so I, I would just was curious, like how tough was that decision knowing a lot of pressure was on you to like not get injured? Yeah. I mean, I never thought about it. So I knew there was a lot of pressure. I knew um, potentially what was on the line in terms of an injury, but you know, I had the support of my parents and uh, my, you know, my close family. And that's all that mattered to me and my, uh, and I knew that, you know, I'm never going to get a chance to play uh, high school football again or even football again from from that point. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, play that last season because I love the sport and, you know, I love the, the support I got from the community to do so. And you guys won a state championship. So mm-hmm. I guess it t- yes, turned, out, it turned out okay. Out. It did. It was, fan- it was the best, it was the best yeah, year of my life, honestly. Right. So – uh, the Pirates seem to covet guys like that, too. I mean, you look at I got another guy that's been on the show, 2017 second rounder, Stephen Jennings, who was a football player as well. He actually played quarterback. He actually tore his ACL and had to pitch his senior year with, uh, with a knee brace on, which he said there was a little bit of an adjustment there. But, I mean, doing fine now. We still ended up going to the second round. He's pitching at Greensboro this year. So, And obviously it worked out for you. I mean, here you are, 18th overall, still even being that multi-sport athlete. So... Obviously, there was nothing you had to change along the lines to get to where you are. Absolutely, yeah. It, it all worked out. Right. So this question is going to make a, a ton of sense to you, I'm sure. I have no idea what I'm about to read um, <laughs> because this is specifically for pitchers. I don't understand any of this. So, And if you don't either, that's completely understandable. <laughs> the, the, so this is our friend that is obsessed with uh, – stats i guess of baseball and math and math so okay. a lot of the time we have no idea what he's talking about but okay. you, but he said you will probably understand even if we don't so this is his exact wording since he is a self-taught guy who has interest in i don't know if this is pronounced rapsodo is that correct rapsodo yeah. rapsodo and k vest what's his spin rate on each of his pitches and does he design his grip similar to those with high spin breaking pitches so I wish I knew all – so, yeah, I'm, like, super into the technology side, and I think that's going to be huge, you know, going forward and progressing uh, to develop more consistency with my pitches. Mm-hmm. But I do not know my spin rates uh, off the top of my head. I, you know, never really focused on them. Uh, I'd never really taught myself to, uh, like, use – try and up a spin rate to help a certain pitch. I wanted to pitch the way I knew how to pitch – and, um, you know, make those pitches better based on feel and arm action rather than just trying to rip spin rates off, off like, the charts and stuff like that. So um, I think some of those numbers are out there from area codes last year, but I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, unfortunately. Okay. I'm glad That's... you understood the question because yeah. we had no <laughs> idea what that meant. Well, I knew he Absolutely. would. It's just for me, I was like, I have no idea what I'm about to ask him, but this is going to make sense to like, him. If, if you boiled that down to the, like, the simplest form, I could probably understand it, but just like – I've never heard well, that term before. The, the first, the first part really didn't even need to be included to me. I think he should, could have just asked what his spin rate is on each of his pitches. I yeah, would understood that. But it's David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, our friend Anthony actually just asked something in the chat, but he was the next one on the list anyway. So I guess I'll just throw both of those together. They're not related at all. One favorite music artist. Two favorite NFL wide receiver of all time. Oh, all right. Um... I feel like it's going to be cliche, but, like, I really like Drake's old stuff, and I think uh, that's, like, a big thing I like to listen to. Um, and then my favorite all-time wide receiver, uh, hmm, I don't know. I've always liked, like, a few guys. Like, I always liked Jordy Nelson, even though I'm a Bears fan. I always kind of respected what he did, like, him and Wes Welker. And then 
I think one of the most fun guys to watch, like highlights of, is Randy Moss, like just absolutely owning so, people and so the competitive nature. You basically had to say that, or there was a follow up here, <laughs> because they said favorite wide receiver of all time. I was going to tell you the second part until after. until after, because the next thing was, and why isn't it Randy Moss? So and why <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, he was just assuming you yeah. weren't going to say Randy he, Moss. He but, put that in the chat but, like a solid five minutes before we even asked it. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming he put it in whenever he found out that you switched to wide receiver. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I I really like uh, I like watching like the highlights of Randy Moss just because like the dude's a freak yeah. and his the like the way he competes is fun to watch. It's not the way I compete, but nonetheless, it's fun <laughs> to watch. Him and To. Yeah, exactly. Chad Ochocinco's in there as well. Ah, yeah. Okay, um, Johnny wants to know, what are some ways you've approached developing arm, sh- arm strength and adding velocity? Uh, I long toss. So whenever I was a kid, on, like, whatever travel team I was on, it wasn't in, on purpose, but, like, I always wanted to be the guy who drew the farthest on the team. Like, I just wanted to throw the ball the farthest. So just growing up, trying to be that guy and trying to, you know, just, you know, be able to develop that, you know, throwing distance and stuff, that helped me develop arm strength just naturally. And I never really had to think about it, and velocity was always just something that I had because of that. Hmm, okay. You do anything with weighted balls at all? Uh, I just, I warm up with them. I go about 50% on, like, two exercises. I'm not a huge uh, fan of absolutely ripping balls into hmm. the wall at, like, 120 miles an hour, but <laughs> it works for some people. Like, you can see Trevor Bauer, he's extremely, extremely successful. Um, with doing that, and um, it's just not for me. Yeah, the reason I ask is because uh, Shane Boz, who's been on here before, and his good friend Forrest Whitley are both like real big into that. So it seems like it's kind of like a newer, <clears throat> newer age thing. So that's why I was curious, a young guy coming oh, out of absolutely. high school. Yeah, no, it's definitely a new thing. It's just never been something that uh, I've gotten into, and I yeah, right. Hey, I mean, whatever works. Yeah, different I mean, stuff. Back when I played, people. I did both those. I did. I was all. I was like him. I was always the kid that wanted to throw the farthest, and I used weighted balls, and then my arm just gave out. <laughs> well, <laughs> look where you are now. Yeah. <laughs> say, only difference is you weren't a draft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so this is the last one from one of our Twitter followers. Who was your favorite player growing up, and have they influenced your mechanics and/or preparation? Um, my favorite player growing up was probably. Uh, I don't know. I always loved, you know, when I really started to get into baseball and watching it, I used to only play it, and now I kind of watch it a lot more and a lot more in detail. I absolutely loved watching Jake Arrieta kind of work and, you know, hearing the stories about him and all that, you know, seeing uh, his physique and him being able to do what he does as being a built guy, uh, I always admired. But, um, you know, I've always been more self-taught. I've never really tried to model myself after you know anybody in terms of mechanics it's always been more of you know just trying to maybe model a pitch or trying to do something similar to help myself out right you know you're talking to pirate fans right (laughs) (laughs) i know i know but i I apologize i'm just being honest yeah no no, he was a killer that year man yeah and i mean like he was so bad with the orioles i don't i don't know what they did in chicago but he turned into a freak yeah absolute buzzsaw yeah (laughs) Um, okay, so this is my question. I always like to start and end my questions with questions that are kind of not baseball related. So if you could just give us a little bit of background about yourself and kind of your family and everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, so I'm 18 years old. Uh, I played, you know, I grew up in Cary, Illinois, which is about an hour and 15 northwest of Chicago. Um, it's really cold. If we don't play baseball in warm weather, so this change down to Bradenton is definitely a change, but I'm really loving it, honestly. And then, um, you know, I've, my mom, uh, Chris Priester, uh, was a big at-time athlete in high school and, um, you know, volleyball, basketball. My dad, Andy Priester, was, um, you know, he played football in high school. Uh, and, you know, just now he's kind of doing his uh, – the family has – uh, business and and he's kind of taken that over and my mom's working with Advocate Healthcare as the VP and, and marketing. I have a sister who just graduated from the University of Alabama 
Uh, she's 21. She's been like a huge part of my life. We're really close and, you know, I'm able to really talk to her about anything. And um, she's always there to support me. And then, um, you know, that's pretty much just about my family. But, you know, I feel like uh, I've had, you know, growing up, I've had a really, really close group of friends that have always supported me and we supported each other and kept each other out of trouble. So I owe a lot to them as well. Awesome. Did you have any, any part-time jobs or anything before, like when you were going through high school? Yeah, I worked as a busboy at, uh, at a sports bar called Goal Line. Mm. Okay. They might have to rename it in, uh, in some years here. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy worked here. Um, okay. Right, yeah. So what was the dr- – I asked this to everybody that's come on here. What was the draft process like for you? Um, I tried to tune it out as much as I could, to be honest. I just wanted to play baseball for Cooter Grove and do uh, the best I could for them. Obviously, that was pretty tough having a lot of people uh, at each game being, you know, trying to tune that out and um, trying to just focus on pitching. But, um, you know, just kind of going through, I knew, uh, you know, just I like to get updates just on, you know, how I was doing uh, in terms of the market and, um just trying to perform my best uh, for the team every day uh, really kind of helped uh, myself as well. Okay. And um, so I'm sure you probably kind of like had a little bit of an idea what pick range you were going to go in. Did pick number 18 fall into that? <laughs> to be honest, that's uh, that was a little bit higher than I thought I was going to go. Um, but I was there for it. I was very happy. I was excited. Uh, it was honestly like a dream come true, and um, but it was I, I kind of figured I was going to be more of like a bottom first round, middle of the bottom first round, and I kind of slipped right in the middle, which was fantastic. So uh, you know, it was you know just the start of something new. Now that uh, now I just got to get to PNC as fast as I can. <laughs> yeah, so kind of going along with the pick range question, I was curious. So you said last summer was whenever you like knew you could get, like, drafted out of high school. But when did you know, like, you were going to be drafted, not not just drafted, but, like, drafted in the first round out of high school? Was it around the same time, or was that a little later? Um, My goal was, and it had always been the same at the beginning of that summer, my goal was to be a first-rounder. Um, but it kind of became more of a reality at the end of the summer when I really put my name out there. And then, uh, you know, about midway through uh, this year uh, in the high school season, there was a bunch of mock drafts that had me floating around uh, the first round. I know that mock drafts ne- don't necessarily mean a whole lot, but it was really exciting to see my name up there and, and then uh, just something to keep working towards. Right. Okay. That's cool. Um, so how difficult was it, your decision to forego your TCU commitment to sign? So – it it wasn't as difficult. It, it was hard, definitely, to kind of walk away from the relationships that I had built, and I and um, I guess not walk away, but not be able to experience them as much as I would have going to TCU. But uh, as a personal decision, you know, for my uh, future and my career, and and for my family, that we did plenty of research. Uh, on you know all the statistics and and you know especially with me you know feeling comfortable with becoming or going to pro ball and living on my own uh as you know a professional um it definitely was was something that we talked about a lot and so when the time came and when you know my name got called we were completely comfortable uh you know with all the research that we had done and all the preparation we had done to make the decision that we did okay cool um, I know that you just said, you know, you might be one a little bit higher than you thought. Um, but from what I saw, I don't know if you guys really looked into it, there was a lot of smoke with Priester coming to the Pirates. Like, that was that was mocked a lot, actually, like leading up to the draft, the last couple of days at least. Um, so what was it, do you think, about your makeup that made you and the Pirates such a perfect match? I think the athleticism. I know Pirates always have loved athletic pitchers and – uh, right-handed, or, well, not even right-handed, but high school pitchers. So um, going into that, seeing, um, you know, that definitely gave you know, me hope that, that this would, you know, work out, and it did, and it's been fantastic, and it's going to be fantastic for many years to come. 
Yeah, uh, what I like, I didn't have this on here, um, is, you know, you were a high school pitcher, but the fact that you alluded to earlier, you pitch, you pitch in cold weather, which, you know, makes, well, when you come to PNC, you're going to see what the Pittsburgh weather's like, it's so you'll be so prepared random. for it. Yeah. You'll, you'll Spitty be pitching, and I have been in a game where it's snowing. Yeah, like yeah. hail. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you'll be pitching a game in June, and it'll be like, I don't know, 60 degrees maybe. Yeah. So you could get all four I'm seasons in one day yeah. here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very good to know that you are used to it, because I'd, I'd rather have that, and then, you know, you... Like you said, you'd have to go to Bradenton and pitch in that now, as opposed to the guy that's used to, used to pitching in that, and all of a sudden having to learn how to pitch in cold weather. So I feel like it would no, be an absolutely. easier transition think, for you. Yeah, I think that gives me a leg up, especially, um, you know, late in seasons in October when it really matters. Right, right. And right, trust right. me, the Pirates do love varieties. We have a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so what is your mindset like on the mound, and does that change depending on pitch count? No, absolutely. So my mindset is to win like every single pitch. Like I want to compete every single pitch and, you know, every single pitch has, you know, some meaning in the game, no matter what. So being able to, you know, have that mindset of, you know, just every single pitch has meaning. I got to throw this, you know, to the best of my ability. That's kind of my mindset with it and trying to beat that batter, you know, every single time I throw, throw the ball. So um, whether it's, you know, 10-0, I've given up 10 runs, or whether we're up 10 runs, or whether it's the ninth inning I've thrown 100 pitches, or the very first inning, it doesn't change for me. Right. Good, good, good. Um, I didn't have this on here either, but kind of just thought about it. What do you personally feel like is your best pitch? The curveball. Definitely. I think I can throw that in any count, and um, it's got really good movement as well. Yeah, I watched a video, video of you on uh, throwing it. Earlier today and yesterday, actually, and I was. Oh, you putting together a scouting report before coming on here? A little bit, but <laughs> I, I was. I was going to ask you kind of similar, like, just uh, if what's your strikeout pitch? Like, if you have to go to a pitch, is was is the curveball? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to get a punch out. I'm definitely if if I had to choose the one, I'm going with that. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, what were your first impressions of well, the Pirates, PNC Park in general, and also Pittsburgh? Um, when we came out of the tunnel, so we came from the airport, obviously, and then we came out of the tunnel and we saw Pittsburgh at night, and it was insanely beautiful. Like, we absolutely loved it as a family, and I loved it, uh, you know, from the first time I saw it. And then actually getting the chance to go out on PNC Park, like, I just, like, had permanent goosebumps. Like, it was the craziest, the coolest field, honestly, I've ever been on. And, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to have the chance to play on, on Wrigley. I've had I've played on Petco and, and the Trop, and it's like it doesn't even compare, to be honest. Having the Clemente Bridge in the back, um, plus just kind of the whole atmosphere and, and everything with Pittsburgh, the river, and all that stuff, it's just absolutely insane. It's the nicest field, I think, in the big leagues, now that I've seen it with my own eyes. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the topic of you coming here, uh, did you did you go to Permanis yet? We sure did. It was fantastic. <laughs> I got the roast meat. Oh. I, I got the roast It was so good. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's one of my two go-to sandwiches. So, yeah. Yeah. I knew it was going to come up. It, it was funny because I started to think about this, like – when he said Promanis, my mind automatically went to it. Like, it's definitely a staple. It's very good. I could eat it, like, every other day. However, and they don't do the fr- – the fries on the sandwiches would get you, right? So there's a there's another sandwich place called Pepe's that, oh, that no. we love. <laughs> that if we're just talking sandwich, like, not necessarily the fries have to be on. If we're just thinking sandwich, we're going to Pepe's over Promanis. I guarantee you whenever you come up here, they'll drag you there. <laughs> you, will, you, will definitely, you will definitely make your way to Pepe's at some point. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so absolutely. I know that you said, you know, you like to do your own thing. You really don't mold your pitching style after anybody. But without doing that, is there somebody that you just happen to see a lot of yourself in when watching MLB games? Um, I mean, not, not necessarily. Uh, the guys that I really love to watch and that I've heard, I've heard – uh, comps to like Rick Porcello with the Red Sox, mm. um, but like the guy who I absolutely love to watch uh, is like Walker Buehler. I think that dude's electric. I think um, he's just incredibly fun to watch as a pitcher. He shows emotion. He uh, throws a hundred, which is sweet and all that stuff. So I mean, 
if I wish people would say I looked like that guy, but I think Rick Purcell is the one I've heard a couple of comps to. Well, how about Walter Bueller last night? Did you see that? 16 Ks? Complete. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. So He's he's insane. Yeah. And he's on my fantasy baseball team, so even better. Nice, nice. <laughs> Um, all right, so let, let's wrap it up here. Once again, I said, you know, non-baseball question to end it. What are your favorite hobbies outside of baseball? Um, so, I really, like, other than hanging out with my buddies, which I think is a pretty standard answer, and hanging out with my friends, um, uh, I love watching movies. So, like, watching, you know, pretty much any movie I can get into. Uh, and, like, my favorites are, like, the Marvel movies. Like, I'm absolutely in love with those. And then... Um, as well, I got to shout out Game of Thrones. Absolutely love Game of Thrones as well. But then also, uh, I've kind of in like when I have time, which um, unfortunately I don't have enough of. But uh, I like to fly with my cousin Alex. So he's uh, our family's been big into aviation. So I like to uh, get up in, in a little airplane and, and learn how to fly from him. And and my uncle GJ flies for United. So I think that's a lot of fun getting up in the cockpit and. Getting that bird's eye view is, is incredible, and, and I absolutely love doing that. It's pretty sweet. For sure, yeah. That's sick. I have still yet to fly. I'm very paranoid. Like, ever? Ever. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't know, the look, we're learning, we're learning about Herb here, too. Uh, it, it's the <laughs> safest form. I just have a fear of heights. <laughs> I would say you're more likely to get in a car accident than the plane to crash. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I have to ask you, since you love Marvel, what did you think of Endgame? I loved it. Like, I... I I'm not even like afraid to say it. like I cried. Oh, like, so that movie was so incredible. Did I. So did I for sure. Multiple and times. Being actually. so like and yeah, and being so invested into that like franchise is it was a great. I, I love the ending. I think it was perfect. Yeah, that's the, I I came home from the movies and I told my mom that I cried a couple times, and she like started making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I didn't even get invested in those and, movies, and I was crying. And I, I told her, it, it's like, think about it. I have been invested for a decade in all of these characters, and it's like all of them are coming into one, and it's just like a rush of emotions all at once. I so, agree with that in every way. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys got anything else? You covered it. All right. Yeah, I think we got a lot of, a lot of good baseball talk. A lot of non-good baseball. What? Do you play Fortnite? Oh, oh no. My. <laughs> no, no. No. Thank I'm, you. I did. I did last year. I'm not, I I kind of lost it. I'm a big Mario Kart guy right now. Okay. Ah, yeah. Nice. Switch up. on a switch. I'm assume. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I I, I just figured I'd ask hard. because we asked pretty much everybody that we've had on if they played Fortnite or not. Oh yeah. I'm actually so yeah. glad that you cut me off because I said instead of non baseball, non good. <laughs> so I hope the talk was all good, but I accidentally said non good. So I'm glad that you cut me off and asked that last question about Fortnite. If you can tell, we're very good at English. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Quinn. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Of course, um, we look forward to following your career leading up to when you get up to the bigs and becoming a pirate. You don't have the, your uh, shirt yet, huh? Trust I actually pressure. did. I got oh, it. Oh, nice. I got it yesterday. I wore it. Sweet, back. sweet. Oh, you wore it already? <laughs> I did wear it. Nice. Sweet, sweet. Well, when we sent when we sent uh, sent Shane his, he told us he wore it like three straight days because he was was just too lazy to do his laundry. <laughs> so, no, I think I don't know. I'm right now, mine's uh, actually in the wash. So word. I just wanted to. I it's hot in Florida. I'm not used to it. I sweat it. <laughs> yeah, and it's, really it's a black hot. shirt. I understand. Yeah, Beef, beefy, and so, I completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Quinn, we're going to let you go. Once again, we appreciate you coming on. I uh, look forward to following your career, and uh, take care. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It means a lot. Uh, hopefully I can uh, get to Pittsburgh as fast as possible. Yeah. Yep. See you sooner than later. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, take care. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, dude. Have a good one. Cool. All right. Well, still uh... – now it's just us, everybody. Uh, yeah, you can leave now. <laughs> um, I still don't know who my favorite is so far. As far as what? Interview-wise. Well, you're picking favorites? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> you better not let the other guys know that. <laughs> of course they don't know. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, really good talk. I, I mean, he said that he loves talking. I think it, it shows Absolutely. very well. 
Um, he's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Articulate. He's very calculated with the things he says. I'm glad he's you said that speaker. properly. He's a good speaker. Yes, yeah. he is. Um, but, okay, so. North Shore 9 said time to go. Yeah, <laughs> it is. He it left. Is. Well, it's time, time to go. go. <laughs> um, so. Time for me to sit back and not be on camera. Why did Denardo say NHL 19? I think whenever I asked him if he played Fortnite, um, oh. he wanted okay. me to ask if he played NHL yeah, 19. Yeah, no, how about that? Gotcha. No? <laughs> I, uh, he's, he's probably so a Blackhawks fan. I so. downloaded NHL 19 on Xbox because it was free. Oh. It was free if you had Xbox Live, like if mm. you had a gold membership. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll download it. Fair enough. Better than paying so, 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So with uh, the NHL now wrapped up and everything, of course the NFL is not going on right now. I guess we should probably switch up the list again. Boy, there was a lot going on today in the NHL, though. I think, yeah. but <laughs> so, so baseball so, should be last. Yeah. So talk about NFL first, obviously. Because um, there's literally. There's a couple things to minimal. cover, but, you know, nothing really that people that are listening care about um, because none of it's Pittsburgh related. Uh, Michael Thomas looking for $22 million a year with the Saints. Uh, right now they're at 18 as far as what they're willing to give him. Um, will they come up or will he go down? I don't know. That's going to get done. Uh, they said that they were comfortable with making him the highest paid receiver. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, Brady and Gordon. I don't know if you guys saw that video. Uh, nope. Tom Brady and Josh Gordon I were saw together. it working out. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like no – like Josh Gordon's not reinstated or anything right yeah. now. So I don't know what's going on there. Do the Patriots still have his rights? Like I don't uh, know what – I don't know. I don't know how that works, to I be honest either. with you. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just, you know, smoke, if Tom Brady's just being a nice guy and getting some working with him. I assume they still have his rights slash the contract he was on because he was with the Browns for all that time being suspended, mm -hmm. and they had to release him. So, Well, no, they traded him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But, yeah, I don't know how. Like, how does he, uh, like, how does that work as far as service time? I assume you know, like, it just cuts the day he was put on that list. Assume. Um, Matthew Stafford played with a broken back last year. What? What? So what? Yeah. Soft. Yeah. What is it with these quarterbacks up north? Up north. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers played with a broken le broken leg. Yeah. And Matt Stafford played with a broken back. Yeah, the NFC North is is wild. You maniacs. Um. Oh, well, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, uh, the his predecessor, Brett Favre, his Instagram got hacked. Oh. And he there said that he was... Oh, that's why that that happened? Yeah, so oh, dang it, it, like, put up a post saying that he was sitting out this season and, like, preparing for a comeback next year. <laughs> Which is, like, for anybody else that's a retired quarterback, it'd, like, be obvious that that was fake, but it's yeah. Brett Favre. Like, yeah, you never He's come know. back, like, three times already, so everyone's like, is, this could How be legit. How old is he? Like, 48? Uh, I think he's older. Yeah, I, I think if he were to come back, like I think he'd turn fifty next year if he were to play. Turn fifty? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady is fifty. <laughs> no, but, but I'm I, saying Tom Brady might still be playing. Yeah, when he's 50. yeah, good point. But uh, who would you say is more athletic right now, <laughs> him or Tom Brady? Just looking at him, I might say Favre. I mean, watching those gene commercials, he that's, get that's all I'm saying. Like, like I'm looking at the bod, and yeah, I, I'm I'm tempted to say Favre. Who's ever on the Trash Cats account thinks it was him? <coughs> he did that. He <laughs> threw that out there. So that, but I'm going to assume it's Tong. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Geddes would probably be on his um, hey, right thing, right? The Jaguars do need a backup quarterback. Mm. You got yeah. Nick Foles now. Any team that Nick Foles is on, you have to have another like quarter, good quarterback. Or you, not, need a, you need a 2A, you not You need a another 1A. name. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, you should just have the other quarterback start for the regular season. And then, and then Foles, wait until yeah. the end of the regular season to put Foles in. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, or have Brett Favre come in, play the first six games, wait for me to say he's going to tear his ACL, <laughs> and then. <laughs> I'd be yeah. really curious to oh, see Geddes. how Brett Favre could do. Oh, it's Geddes today. Hi, Geddes. Also, yes, the, the overlay is nice because you guys made it. Yeah, I really enjoy having the chat right there on the screen. Makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, speaking of backup quarterbacks, Josh McCown retired. He was still in the league? 14 mm -hmm. years? He was the last 15? player from the 02 yeah. draft, so yeah. Um, also, that ball is way but, up But, I mean, he made him made a career for himself. There were times where he looked pretty decent. At one point, he was like the Bears starter when Jay Cutler went down. Is he Ryan's fit, Ryan Fitzpatrick before Ryan Fitzpatrick? Hmm. Well, how many teams has Ryan you Fitzpatrick what, been on? I don't know. It's a good bet. Fitzy, Jets, Bills, Bucks, Bucks. Pretty now the sure Dolphins. Dolphins. Pretty sure it was on the Eagles for a period of time. I think. Fitz. I think. Uh, I'm not sure about. I think it's only been like four or five teams. 
He's not Josh McCown level. Yeah. Josh McCown's, what, 10? He made or is ten, it more? He made $10 million last year, Josh McCown. What? Yeah. How? Well, he was going to be the like the mentor for Sam Darnold, like the Jets starter for a season, but then they just ended up going with Darnold. Uh, $10 million? Yeah. Uh, okay. But, okay, so yeah, this is bothering me, Fitzpatrick's teams, because I'm trying to picture him in uniforms. <sighs> Two weeks just re- subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> That's three <laughs> subscriptions today. We're making money, guys. We're making money. All we got to do is reach 100 and we can finally cash out. <laughs> Um, let me just look him up. <laughs> Still, my favorite picture of Ryan Fitzpatrick is the one where he's wearing uh, Deshaun Jackson's clothes. Oh, absolutely. Last year. Yeah. He looked tough. Tough as nails. Should have brought um, him back just for that. Get okay. Rid of so, Buffalo, Cincinnati, New York Jets, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, Houston, Tennessee. For Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's P- Fitzpatrick. Okay. So yeah, does St. Louis count as L.A. or we count it as St. Louis? St. Louis. Okay. Cool. And so then seven. McCown is 10 to 12 teams, right? Somewhere in that range. So Fitzpatrick is nine teams, and Josh McCown <laughs> is... Give me one <laughs> second. <laughs> I want to say this real quick. Geddes is watching our stream because he got mad at 2K. <laughs> We're oh. the fallback. <laughs> we are the fallback. Is ten teams, so he was only one. B- he's only one behind Josh McCown. You might as well Wasn't just sign seven? somewhere else. Wasn't Fitzpatrick seven? Yeah, yeah. So it's ten and seven. I I just looked it up. I thought it was nine. When Herb was counting, I counted I seven. seven. Oh, okay, maybe I counted wrong. <laughs> math. We can do math too, guys. <laughs> English and math are our strong suits. All right. Yeah. So that was about it in the NFL. Uh, like I said, nothing really relating to the Steelers. Uh, training camp coming soon. That, that's about all we can say. Uh oh. Wait. I, I might have like. Exclusive news. I don't know if anybody posted it from last night, but uh, I went to Pat McAfee's stand up. They oh. recorded their live podcast and they had Ryan Shazir on. Mm-hmm. Um, he said his doctors have, he didn't give himself a timeline, but his doctors have told him he might actually be able to play again. Wow. Why would he say that in like a th- to a thousand people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's like, screw yeah. Ed Bouchette. I'm telling these guys. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I just, not that I'm trying to say that he won't or I'm discrediting what his doctors say, but like, I just don't know that the team doctors will allow that. Yeah, with I the insurance completely and everything. Agree. Like, yeah, that's so. I just, I just thought I'd put that out there. Yeah. All right. That, well, I, I mean, that's, that's relatively big news for yeah. somebody who we thought would never walk again. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so switching gears now uh, to the NHL. So once again, this is where more people leave. And we'll here we listening. go for an <laughs> uh, hour. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, a lot happened um, just within the last twenty-four hours. Uh, you know, uh, the draft, twelve <laughs> draft beat. Yeah, with the draft being yesterday. Uh, and the Pens actually made a first-round selection. I don't know if Rutherford lost track of time and then realized he couldn't trade it. He may have. <laughs> um, but they actually did make a first-round selection. Um, Sam, and is this Poulin? Poulin. Yeah, Poulin. So, yeah. Um, to other it, people, it probably has a French-Canadian accent on it, but Americans, Poulin. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> He's Poulin until further notice. There were two other players that I would have liked there if you're actually making a pick. I wasn't against trading it just because... I mean, we're in win-now mode anyway. Yeah. Um, but they keep it. They take this guy who, based off everything I heard last night, isn't going to be in the NHL for about two years. Um, but Shake my head, my head. It's a bold strategy for a first-round pick. but for, for, the, for the Penguins, who are trying – like, if you're a team that's not close, like, whatever, you yeah. know. But, like, the Penguins are trying to win championships right now while you still have these guys that you do. Yeah. And they take a guy that's not going to be here for two years. Now, how many guys were there that would be in the NHL right away? I uh, probably probably none. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, I mean, when you're picking that late, I would say top ten. A- after top ten, whether they start on the NHL roster or not is spotty. Yeah, but if so, you're a top ten pick, then you probably are. There were two names that I liked that I said Suzuki and is it Arthur Kaliev? Kaliev. Yeah, he w- scored fifty goals last year. Fifty one. Wherever the hell he was playing. Yeah. In the O, I think. I think, I think it was the, the O. I think yeah. so. So those were the two names that I liked. Uh, it's not that this guy was necessarily like a reach. He was probably going in the first round regardless. Yeah. He's also um, a massive person. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw some highlights. Are you going to really take that out of context? <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw some highlights. Uh, seems to have good hands, too. The one knock is his speed. 
You know, can he skate at the NHL level? Um, but, I mean, <laughs> the question is what he'd answer sooner rather than later. So. Also, there's something going on in the chat that I want everybody watching the video in the future to just watch. So, <laughs> also, don't listen to North Shore 9. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> um, okay, so, the I mean, the beginning of the, the first two picks, we knew what they were going to be. Uh, I guess there was a little bit of a question. Yeah. Would uh, Hughes go one? I personally like Kako. That's see. I feel like Hughes is safer. Like he is the higher. Fl- yeah. Like the the floor is yeah, there. Exactly. He's gonna be what like, he is. He is Austin Matthews compared to Patrick Laine. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, yeah. but I feel like Capo Caco has the ceiling. So yeah. if they both hit their ceiling, I like him more for the Rangers. Agreed. Also, apparently, I am Goodwin. Hmm. Beefy's Tong, I'm Smitty, and G Dub is hurt. I'm not gonna say no to that. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. The draft after the Why first. Can't I be black? <laughs> <laughs> after the first uh, three picks or so, I feel like this draft was super light. Well, number three to me was a reach. Yeah. That's Kirby what it... Doc? Yeah. They're Dirk. I don't know how to pronounce it. However, Doc. The hell, however the hell it's pronounced. Yeah. No one had him higher than 12 to 15 ish, yeah. maybe. Like I think so. On, yeah. Yeah. It definitely wasn't top ten. And he goes number three. Um I don't like it's it's hard because I don't know much about any of these guys. So I'm really just listening to people that I trust, like Jesse Marshall, you know, talking about yeah. that pick being a reach. Um but the Everything Cana- said that should have been Byron Byron Byram. The defenseman. Yeah. Um where did he end up going? He, Colorado. Who, next yeah, pick. Okay. Yeah, right. But um who else the who did the Canadians take that was... Cole Caulfield. Yeah. He t- he dropped to 15 when he's yeah. the best goal scorer in the draft. Because he's small. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, he's too small is probably why people are passing on him. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jack Hughes is small. Yeah. He's not yeah. a big dude. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's what... But it, and it's just like, he was a surefire one, number one or two pick, though. But, like, so why is the best goal scorer get slighted like that just because he's not as big when he's, like, the same size as Hughes? It, it's the NHL, man. It, I just, I mean, I just don't know how <laughs> teams view these guys. Anyway, especially now, the the Blues have set this league back like five years now. Just so you know, everyone's gonna be like, ah, get big and strong again. Well, yeah. Gronk. <laughs> Hopefully, the the Pens watch that and revert back to their old ways. Fifteen, yes. sixteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. While everybody else does the Blues. Model. I, I mean, did we talk about it last week? Cahoon? that trade, Mata. Uh. No, no, that no, because no, that was on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So Olimata traded. Was it one for one, or did we get a pick back? A fifth round. Okay, yeah. So we got that fifth rounder, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Mata for Cahoon and a fifth rounder. Mm-hmm. Cahoon actually looks pretty solid. I've seen a lot of people comparing him to Ryan Rust, uh, if not better. Which is why I thought Ross is getting traded. I mean, it still could happen, but I thought uh, it was going to yeah. happen at the draft. It still could. Yeah, Redford I, said one to two more trades. Expect. I don't think he, it's going to be Russ. What the hell? Did you guys watch like right after the Penguins picked last night? Mm. Did you see that at all? I feel like I, I did, was. I, can't I was driving. Okay, so so, so uh, they were talking to Rutherford on the broadcast, and he said, "You know, I don't know where this idea got that we were going to like make all these big moves." Like he himself was the one <laughs> like saying them, and then he says, "You know, about one to two more trades." And then it's just he's going against himself with a lot of what he says. He says yeah. one thing, then he says something else that. Completely negates what he just said. He's a senile you know? old man that should not have that job. I'm not sure that he knows he has the job. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> no, but anyway, um, <laughs> I just, I thought Russ was getting traded last night, to be honest with you. I, I thought that's why he was on the phone, dude, and I thought it was like going to be like Rust in that first rounder for something. After everything yesterday, I thought the thing was gone. I, I never, okay, I want to talk about that, but you just brought up the, the Mata trade. I opened the can of worms. Which, yeah. So, Holy shit. So Mata gets <laughs> traded Sorry. for Cahoon in a fifth. I like Cahoon a lot. Um, and to be honest with you, with the situation the Penguins are in cap-wise, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was just Mata for a draft pick. You know, getting yeah. an NHL player back, That's I thought Rutherford did very well on that trade yeah. in particular. However, it doesn't solve the problem that you looked at that defense and it's not any better. Here's my favorite thing, is everyone after that trade happened was, okay, who's Cahoon? And then after they figured that out, they were like, okay, well, at least Mata's off the team because no one likes him. And I'm like, 
eh, you just don't appreciate it. Yes, he, he can suck sometimes, but eh. The thing that sucked was Johnson, after the trade, was like, it was either going to be Mata or Johnson. That sucked. Or Rutherford after the trade yeah, said it yeah. was that sucked. Mata or Johnson. And then after the Tang thing yesterday, everyone's like, ah, yes, let's trade 7.25 Chris Tang instead of trading the two dickheads on the bottom pair that make 7.25 together. That are absolutely horrible at their job. I just I don't get the the trade. One dickhead's not bad in Pittsburgh though. Look at yet. <laughs> look at the blue line right now. How can you look at that and say? And I understand that they would probably do something else to it if Latang were traded. But how do you look at it right now and say that's the guy we're trading? Because you're crazy. The guy that plays like thirty minutes a night and actually is good. Because because you're crazy. Because I. It's just unf- and if the thing is if you were to. He's gonna make more. He would make more than that right now if he were a free agent. Somebody were signing him. Absolutely. So what he's making isn't bad. Like mm-hmm. I understand people are talking about, like, oh, he's making seven point two five million or whatever he is to miss a dozen games a year at least. The I just I don't know. I'm so over the trade Chris Letang talk. I would actually, and no one talks about it enough, but I can't remember. I wish I could credit the person that tweeted it, but I just happened to see it. I don't know who it was that brought up, and I understand that he got hurt. How bad Justin Schultz was. Yeah. And he's making a good chunk of money. Yeah. What? Four? Five and a half. Five and a half. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I was going to say four and a half. Okay. He's making five and a half million dollars. He was not five and a half million dollars good. No, <laughs> no. After getting hurt. Um, I mean, it's understandable, but it's not ideal. And but but the problem is no one's, but everybody wants to get rid of Latang. Yeah. But nobody's talking about how bad, like if Justin Schultz could, I understand he's not going to replicate the season he had when Latang was out. Yeah, no, no. But. I mean, he needs to step up to be a complimentary piece. Be that second option as an offensive defenseman. Yeah, exactly. Just play his game. Like we can, th- the way he was when we brought him in. And mm-hmm. Yeah, there just something's got to give. I, Looking I, at it right now, it's. Or, I I saw uh, Jeff from Penn's blog say, next year. Looking at it right now, can you really say that the Penguins are a playoff team? No, especially with what just happened with the Metro. Which we're going to talk about. Um, but what's the what's the blue line now? Well, Tang Dumlin. <laughs> Tang Schultz Dumlin, Ricola. Schultz. Probably Johnson. Probably Johnson. And then Good Branson Ricola. Good Branson Pedersen. Oh, yeah. I which was on they, the Pedersen train for so to, long. Rutherford said Ricola's going to Ricola was gonna play. All right. What then, the hell is going to Who's going who's gonna to go? They're one or two more trades. <laughs> that, that somebody's going. Can we trade Jim Rutherford? Can we do that? I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a lot. You can trade a coach. I don't think you can trade Jim a Jim Rutherford has traded himself. I would enjoy that. <laughs> to retirement. What a move. Power move. Um, a, a pick that I was a little thrown off by was the Panthers taking the first goalie and only goalie in the first round, Spencer Knight, at 12th overall. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, I mean, he's the best goalie prospect, obviously. He was the only one that could potentially go in the first round. You don't often see goalies going no, in the first round. Yeah. Right now they need a goaltender, but the thing is they've been – so linked to Sergei Bobrovsky that a lot of people just thought it was a foregone conclusion. Now, Knight's not ready right now. No, and that's But it's not like he's going to take seven years to get ready, and that's probably what Bobrovsky's going to get in free agency. I don't know about that. He's what, 31? Bob? I don't know how old he is, but I feel like there's going to be a decent enough market where the team's going to have to just suck it up and give him seven years, even though he's not going to be there for seven years. So I don't think they're going to give, or anyone in the league's really going to give him a massive deal. Um,. I think they'll give him a lot of money over a short amount of time. I just do not trust anything Sergei Bobrovsky does just because he's... Well, I don't either, but yeah. I'm just going based off what he's Bob 30. McKenzie... He's 30. When what Bob McKenzie, Pierre Lebron said. He's 31 said. September 20th, yeah. so he, he'll probably... He'll be 31 at the start of the season. So, yeah, someone would be... Someone will give him a six- or seven-year deal. Why? Why? And I just assumed it was going to be the Panthers, but now... I, this, and if that's not, who do you bridge that gap to Spencer Knight? I have no idea. <laughs> do you stick with Luongo and Reimer? And the, and the thing is, too, it's not like he's a slam dunk goaltender. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if you take... Flurry. Yeah, just, just, just some, some bridge guy to him who could be very good, but he's got, like, one or two years left, and then you're banking on Spencer Knight. What if Spencer Knight sucks? Yeah. I Whereas mean, if you, I mean, there, you know what Bobrovsky everyone. is. Yeah, but you know that with everyone. I... I <laughs> You know what Bobrovsky is, but he's so wishy-washy. He'll have one good year, and then he'll destroy your team. Who's the Panthers' goaltending coach? I mean, we're not going to know that answer. but yeah. <laughs> uh, Fired next year if they bring up Bobrovsky. <laughs> That's his name. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. It just doesn't seem like a move, a draft pick that would be made if that's what they were doing in free agency. They should trade for Jake Allen. Hmm. As a bridge goaltender. Makes 4.35, which isn't too much. That'd be interesting. Also, he only has two years on a deal. Get us because you asked. Pro FX 12. He too. Now, and, and, but also with that, is Jake Allen good enough to get the Panthers into the playoffs next year? Because they have, like, looked at that team now. Yeah. With with Joe Twenville. Like, they have playoff aspirations. I think it's going to help a lot. I mean, they should have, they could have made it this year. Arguably should have if Huberto was, wasn't out for a period of time there. Um, and the goaltending just wasn't good enough, so. Which that's so that's what I'm that's why I'm saying yeah. like there's just so many question marks like, are you signing Bobrovsky? If so, why did you gra- draft Spencer Knight and Panarin if for that matter? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the, I don't know. I just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And a lot of this stuff isn't going to be solved for at least tonight because I know the NHL is planning on announcing how much the salary cap is this year tonight. Apparently, it's yeah not going to be as much as people thought. No, I think they said eighty two point something. Yeah. Which is, that's up from what, 79? Or 78 and a half? 78 and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another solid roster player, you would imagine. But I think they were expecting mm. 84, maybe 85. Yeah. I don't, I honestly, I didn't look at the projected numbers. I just saw it wasn't as much as expected. They were yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's so hard to tell right now what's going to go on just because all these trades and everything are being held up because of that. Um. Plus, like even thinking forward with the cap, next season's going to be a hell of a time with the expansion draft, the salary cap going up probably another eight million dollars or so. So who knows? Who's your way too early protected list? Oh God! Well, I can already tell you, I'm leaving Eric Goodbranson and Jack Johnson uh, out there. Who is it? Six six forwards, three defensemen, and a goalie. I mean, uh, yeah, sure. We'll say that. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what it was for last or last time. We should answer this next week. All right, uh, that's fine by me. <laughs> also, the for Jake Allen, I don't think the question is is he is he good enough to get them in the playoffs? Is he better than Luongo or Reimer? Yeah. You think? think? Reimer, they're buying out. He's not going to be back there. Yeah. You, do you think he's really better than Luongo? They were in last place while he was the starter. I mean, the whole they, team was but bad. they could have both, right? If they don't get Bobrovsky. Yeah. You would I mean, they did fire their coach. It could have been the team playing in front of them that didn't help either. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They. Almost, I mean, they made a push, but right? J- Jake Allen is also so shaky, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not advocating yeah. for it. I just. That's what I was saying. Like they're they're a playoff caliber team. If you take away the goaltending situation. Who do we want? They're a wild card caliber team. Yeah. Who do we want <laughs> on Florida right now? Because I'll give them Tristan Jari. I mean, is he is he the answer there? Yes. Um, Pitch it, <laughs> Jonathan Huberdeau. I, I don't think he has. Much, <laughs> I don't think he has much value to be honest. After Dismiss coming up now. Well, Jesse Marshall said with people who always say throw in uh, Jari or trade Jari, he said every AHL team has Jari. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much every every system has a Jari. Give me Malgin. I mean, we're giving up something else probably to get. Probably. <laughs> uh, oh, no, that's not that's not happening. I was about to add Jack Johnson to that, but we'd have to take like a piece of paper. <laughs> um, did you guys see? Um, Ryan Reeves was on Spitting Chicklets, and was he? Uh, it, well, yeah. The, the, when we you brought up we brought up the coaching change in St. Louis, it made me think of this. He said that he thinks that the voting for um, some of the awards should go past the writers. Oh no! Should go past the regular season, because oh, yeah. because he took the last place team and they won the Stanley Cup. Uh-huh. And he's he said like how he didn't win the Jack Adams is a joke. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Bruby is that his name? Bruby, yeah. yeah. Bruby. I mean, but that I mean, if you want to do it like that, I guess that's fine. I just I've always looked at it as just like a regular season thing. I mean, yeah, uh, it, I completely get what he's saying. Yeah, but. I I don't think it really And also I would have thought anyone. not necessarily the cup, but I would have thought of the St. Louis Blues as a playoff team anyway. Whereas the Islanders I would not have. Yeah. Well so it's it's hard because the Jack Adams generally speaking is, oh, your team did better than expected. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm I'm fine with Barry Trotz winning it over Barube. 
Yeah. Because the Islanders, to me, were not a playoff team going into the season. Yeah. But Barry, we knew Barry Trotz was a great coach. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they, I get the the thought process on both sides. That's what I'll say. Um. Okay, so just saw this. I don't know how long this has been going on. I just saw the thing today that the Hurricanes were shopping Justin Falk. Yeah. There's no extension talk. Yeah, that's been that's been going for a while. Um, but what do we think happens with that? Oh man! I mean, if you look at the Hurricanes' defense, I guess he is expendable now. Like it's just crazy because he was their best what? defenseman for a long time. What if there's a second part to the Marlowe trade? Uh, then Carolina's stupid. <laughs> well, I just depending on what yes. they'd be getting back as par- part as this part. I. Just saying, I'll put that out there because they're still looking for defense. Yeah. So. Well, they were rumored to, you know, the next thing, Subban. Uh, oh, were they? Yeah. I saw people saying that. I'm like, I have not seen any. It was them and Vancouver. But, like, originally I didn't see the Devils at all. It was the two Canadian teams. Ray Shiro. Being aggressive. High rolling it right in there at the last minute. Yeah. So, anyway, all right. Hurricane Shopping Falk, whatever. We'll see if actually something actually yeah. comes to that. But that's not a deal that we actually know is done as opposed to. P.K. Subban going to New Jersey. Um, Crazy. For for nothing. Two, two second-round <laughs> picks. And well, I don't even know who the players uh, were. But it doesn't matter because I like the deal for Nashville. Because they got rid of all of P.K. Subban's $9 million, didn't need any of it, and now they're going to sign Matthew Shane. And they're fine on defense. Hey, if they take anyone from Columbus that's a free agent right now, thank you. Thank you. I just want that Colum- franchise to fold. And that's the guy I would have thought Columbus would retain. Yeah. They're going to retain to Zingle. Congrats. He's ass. <laughs> I'm, fu- I'm I'm talking about between Bobrovsky, Panarin, and Duchesne. Yeah, I know, yeah. I would have thought Duchesne's the one that they were going to retain. Yeah, no, agreed, yeah. So last year's just a complete bust for Columbus. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Nashville will pay him $9.5 to $10 million. But, I'm f- I mean, I'm fine with the deal for New Jersey, too, as well. I just, at this point, I feel like P.J. Subban's a very good player, but he's making elite money. For four yeah. more seasons. For yeah. four more seasons at $9 million. Now, that Three might actually seasons. look... Huh? Three more seasons. Seasons. Is it? I'm almost positive. I saw everybody saying four. I looked at Cap Friendly today. I thought it said three. I mean, the per- the people I could have been seeing... I, it's not like I saw a lot of people saying four seasons. Um, Great band, by the way. <laughs> but either way... Uh, I mean, I guess three seasons is a little better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's going to look better... With three, the three seasons, with the uh, cap continuing to go up as well, yeah. I just I don't know, man. It's a million and a half more than Latang. I mean, he could score seventy points this year, and then yeah. everybody shuts their mouth. I mean, he <laughs> he helps the Devils back end, in my opinion, because their best mm-hmm. defenseman outside <laughs> outside of Will Butcher was Sammy Vatman. Yeah. Eh. So they just need goaltending. No, I mean that's what I like to deal for both sides. Like, yeah. I understand people saying Nashville didn't get anything back. But what they got back it's is the ability to do what they want to in free agency. Yeah. The they're ability final to overpay Matt Duchesne. Yes. <sighs> I mean, if he gets the same amount of money, I think he's worth more than P.K. Subban. If he gets $9 million. True. Yeah. They're still overpaying. <laughs> well, yeah, you see a lot of overpaying now. But I, I think Duchesne was pretty good once he got traded, though. Yeah. Not, not to uh, Ottawa. No. When he got traded to, to Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. I'm but so disappointed they didn't collapse, like, fully. Like, they didn't just fall out of the playoffs at the last minute because that would have been so great. Yeah, oh. just the Matt Duchesne effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would have been so good. Yeah. But it's not going to happen now. It's over. Um, um, That was weird. It was. What? Uh, the Marlowe trade. You want to yeah. go over that? Mm-hmm. that uh, I just thought, Patty Marlowe, a conditional first. I have no idea what the condition is yet. If I think it's if he... Like, actually plays for them, oh, right? Then okay. it's 2020. If not, it's 2021 or something. Pro- yeah, I think so. Um, in a seventh so rounder. So it's 2021. <laughs> what? Because he's not going to play for him. Yeah, uh, for a sixth rounder. So that gives the Leafs cap room. Kapanen has essentially agreed to an extension, but it's not expected to be announced until they figure out the whole cap situation with Marner. Uh, it was, what, three years, three point. They didn't give an exact something. number. Yeah, it was three point two to three point four. Yeah, and then same thing with Janssen. Four years, about the same price, three point two five to three point five. So that's interesting. God knows what Mitch Marner is going to ask for. This will probably be the first time we see an offer sheet in a long time, and it 
I don't think they won't get matched. I don't think he's going to get offer sheeted. I really? think they're just going to pay him. I think Ray Shiro <laughs> offer sheets him. I think the Leafs are going to pay him, and I think they'll do whatever, most of whatever it takes to do that. Like everybody else is expendable that's not Austin Matthews, Morgan Riley, or John Tavares to make money, to make room. Yeah. Like if it it takes like trading Kadri to sign him, they do it. I think Kadri's gone. I'm surprised they didn't do it already. Yeah. But the thing is, too, you can be thinking about right now, but you also have four guys. Make, taking up a lot of cap, like how's that work for your future? Well, I mean, the cap's only gonna go up. That that's the thing. Like, I, I mean, it's how how we were. Yeah, after next season or after this season, the cap's gonna go up by a load. Um, that's true. And I think it'll stay stagnant at that point, just because I don't think they're gonna. Oh, what a slide! I'm yeah. I'm not. See, I I wasn't really like. F- Thinking about it that like that with the cap continuing to go up, I was just seeing tweets about like they're how are they going to make the, like there's no way they can make this work. This season is going to be hard. Well, like, my th- like you can't roster a team with pr- enough players. Good players, <laughs> actually. I don't know. They do have a couple guys in the A that I really like that could play in their bottom six. Uh, one person that I think they need to bring back, and I don't think they can because I think he priced himself out is Tyler Ennis. Mm. I think what's going to happen there is he's going to sign in Philly. Yeah. So, just saying that. So when it happens, another player in the Metro. First. Yeah, joining uh, Jimmy Hayes. Who? What, so a, what, con- a, what a contract! What a deal! Yeah, he scored twenty goals once in his career. Yeah, but I he said has Jimmy, his coach, Kevin Hayes. Yeah, Kevin. Jesus, Jimmy Hayes was on the Penguins. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Kevin Hayes got his coach. That's why he got paid. And Trubo going to the Rangers. So that was pretty Metro. solid. Um, J T. Miller got traded. I don't even know who was going back for him. M- Mazanic? Yeah, goalie. Oh, uh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Probably the most Vasile- Did Vla- Vasilevsky sign an extension? If he didn't yet, he's going to. I don't, I don't think they have room to sign him. <sighs> they had to trade work. Miller to sign Point, right? Well, would, convincingly enough, or coincidentally enough, with. What's his name doing on long term IR? Uh, Ryan Callahan is yeah. career ending. I think they would have been able to get point without yeah. the JT Miller trade now, but they did it anyway because now they have even more. Fair enough. Never mind. Uh, John Hayden to New Jersey for John Quinville. Is that his son? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much it outside of uh, picks being traded. Yeah, there were a lot of picks traded around. Well, the Penguins traded three picks. Well, two additional picks to move up yeah. to 74 to take a guy that a lot of people had like in the top 40. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I wonder why he fell so far. Not sure, but I know he works out with – the. he's like really good friends with the first pick, Sam Pullen. Oh. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Well, I mean, that's why we – well, I don't want to say that's why we took Jordy Bellary, but yeah, part of the reason. Um, Was that it? I think that's it. For hockey, I think, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're just waiting on the, mainly the the Mitch Marner thing. I feel like that's the yeah, and to see what the hell happens just, with the Penguins blue line. Yeah, that's about it. I'm sure there's gonna be other big trades, but I'm honestly more intrigued by, by the Marner thing than the Penguins blue line. Oh, at this point. absolutely, like, <laughs> absolutely, because we've never seen anything like this. Just the possibility of an offer sheet is yeah. intriguing to me. Exactly, and it's like it's been so long too. So, uh, did Kevin Newman just jack one? No, no. <laughs> Damn. He jacked one to I'm the I'm doing a little bit of math real quick. What? Two. I'm doing a little <laughs> bit of math real quick. Where's David? Hold on. <laughs> um We don't need math. Math is stupid. <laughs> All right. Well none of us are in school anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um We're failures. What is the math for? The Leafs? It's kind of. Are you looking at cap percentages? Kind of. Hmm. I don't know what kind of would be of cap. Percentage. Anyway, anybody know what uh, Morgan Riley's cap hit is? Isn't that like five point something? Good God. Here's the entertaining portion of the podcast, everyone. This is the part where nobody listens because we're talking about hockey and it's well, yeah. past, it's past even the draft, which nobody cares about unless you like hockey. Well, yeah. Yeah, good point. <laughs> even um, hockey fans don't care about the draft that yeah. much. Five million. Oh, damn near. But and he has a no trade clause that kicks in after the season. 
for two more. For he has two more seasons after this year on his contract. That's fair. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to go anywhere either. Yeah. What's the cap for the, uh, so? 80, 80, 82? 82 and a half, I want to say, is the projected right now. Okay, say so it's 82 and a half. Trying to figure out how much those group of players would take up percentage wise? Yeah. So Riley, Matthews, Tavares, Marner, is that the only ones you're doing? Knee later. Like Mar- oh. No, I'm not doing Nylander. I'm just doing those four. Uh, okay. Should just let Nylander go. I'm going to say probably about 37% or so. Uh, Math. Critical yikes. Around 45%. <laughs> oh, wow. So Nylander takes that up, our, up over 50. Fair enough. Yeah. Hey. Pays to be good. Anyway. They're just going to have, like, seven Garrett Wilsons. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, your concern was how are they going to pay other guys? Yeah. In 2015, um, which is when we traded for Kessel, <coughs> the salary cap was lower, and the four cap hits of Kessel, Malkin, Latang, and Crosby combined – were a similar percentage yeah. as if Marner got paid $11 million. Oh, wow. Okay, but what did the rest of the roster make? Because if you're talking about, uh, I guess we're not including Kapanen and Johnson, Johnson yet. Yeah. Because mm. if you add those two guys in, how can they have Marner then? Well, you trade Kadri. Which I think is going to happen. Also, Machado. I, either way, I don't think Marner's going anywhere. I don't. I think I mean, he's. I, made, don't I think he's staying in Toronto, and I think he's ma- making his money. Cool. And you don't even think that it's taking. An, he's getting offer sheeted, and they're matching it. You just think he's getting paid by them. I think he would get paid by them. Yeah. Beefy, could you do me a favor? Could you take the last chat and just remove it? Okay. <laughs> it's a like block of text that absolutely has no sustenance. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, that's it for hockey. So, uh, going on behind us. Which you guys can't see. Thank God. Is was that a slider? I don't know. Eighty-eight. I hope it wasn't a slider. That's a ball. Nice catch. Uh, anyway, uh, the Pirates are playing. Machado just hit a homer off Archer. Hey, it's the fourth inning. It's only one nothing. Um, Josh Bell is a finalist for the All Star so game. Did he make it? Like, is he in the game? I don't know how it works for reserves. Because I think now. They're just pitch- picking who starts. Who starts? Yeah, but the other two are still in it. I believe so. Or one of the, or the bottom one gets knocked out or something like that. Hmm. North yeah. Shore Nine gave us one cent. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him Anthony from now on, not the Anthony. Um, Tony. And it also, he's going to the Homer Derby? Question mark. Is he? Oh. Question mark? Oh, Jacob Josh Bell. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Donardo. Uh, Leaked question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Donardo bought a ticket to go it's to like Cleveland? What are you talking about? No, he's competing in it. Denardo. Josh Bell got invited. Yeah. Jacob Cruz didn't say he was going. Do you I, want? I, him I don't to think go? he'd tweet that. Oh, he would. Do you want him to go? I don't care. Like, if he wants, I, I really don't have a, an opinion on it. To be at honest. this point, I don't care either. Because my whole thing was, what if he fucks up his swing? And somebody was like, "Well, that's all." I was just, I didn't know if you bought into them. And then messing somebody up their swing. And then I, I mean, I do buy into it. And then somebody goes, "But he already is a switch hitter. If anything, he's gonna fuck up your swing. That's it." And I'm like. Good point. And, I mean, look at his swing in June anyway, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to May. So, I, I really don't care. If he wants to go, go do it. It'll be I fun think it'll be a cool experience. Yeah. yeah. So, when does the starters voting happen? When does it start? Um, It's... Can we ban Donardo? <laughs> I mean, I can. He, he gave us another sentence and said, I'll give you my two cents. It's hey, <laughs> he's our bit leader now. Next week, it's only like a, a two or three day period. The like election yeah. voting now yeah. with the top three. It's only well, like Bell was leading period. by what over two hundred thousand votes. Yeah, there wasn't a way that he was falling out of the top three to get to this because like the fourth guy didn't had like a half a million votes or something. What's like, annoying is that Bell had the most votes among first basemen, but in the like advertisement for the first baseman in Martin the NL, Freeman. Rizzo was in the middle. Oh, was he? Yeah, I thought it was Freeman. Hmm. Fair enough. I, I, I don't. I don't care at this point. Marketing is stupid. Um, okay, so there's that, there's that, boom, boom. Uh, might as well talk about the Roynolds thing. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> so for a second, I thought you said Royals. No, 
There's nothing to talk about with the Royals. Whit no, Merrifield. Hunter yeah. Dozier. Whit Merrifield. Did Hunter Dozier make the uh, yeah. final? Good. He yeah, it's it. him, Bregman, of course, Yeah. and Who's Giovanni Ursula. Oh. Yeah. So, guy who went to the Yankees and all of a sudden got good for a little bit. Yep. Uh, Alex Bregman is having a down year. The Indians were just like, we'll see ya. Yeah. And now he's an all-star finalist <laughs> for the Yankees. I don't get it. Oh, we're about to get spammed with bits, by the way. Fine. Uh, Give us money. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw our tweet. I'm sure you did if you watched Pirate Game. I'm sure you saw I'm Jeff's sorry. tweet. I'm sure you saw Jeff. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Jeff's tweet is yeah. the one that made the, the broadcast. Yep. We, uh, oh, boy. Greg Brown gave us a cold shoulder there. Yeah. And, and then he's reading the tweet and then gets to it and goes, oh. <laughs> Steve, and Steve Blast just said uh, something about, are we sure that's not for Melky? Because <laughs> his locker is right there, too. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Brian Reynolds just keeps hitting. He's awesome. He has one of our shirts now. Yeah. You should go buy one. Jeff has one, too. That's about it. And you should buy one. We yeah. did sell a couple. And they said people want more. Yeah. People what? want oh. more. Let's, let's just <laughs> we'll have more to talk blow about that, that door straight down. We'll have more to talk about on that next week. <sighs> That's twice that our shirt has <laughs> been in the clubhouse, by the way. <laughs> what, was, what was this stretch thing he just did? That was him flexing. Was it? I couldn't tell. Well, he was stretching, but it was like him covering up a flex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you pronounce the dude's last name for the athletics that got suspended? Just Montas? Montas? Frankie Montas. That's how I pronounce it. Yeah, well, he suspended 80 games. He's their, their best pitcher so far After this year. pitching a gem. Yeah, that was so before. funny. Yeah, sub-3 ERA right now. The A's, the A's account goes from, look at Frankie, to like 12, hour, <laughs> to 12 hours later. <laughs> He's been suspended for 80 games. We can't say anything about him ever again. <laughs> uh. um, and then to me, the biggest thing in baseball right now, the Rays get permission to explore the idea of being a two-city team. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, it's stupid. <laughs> it is stupid, but it also... Can you elaborate? <laughs> so they would play half their games where the, they do the now. The beginning of the season in Tampa. They would use Tampa Bay as the opener. And then they would play half their games in Montreal. So, like, the all-star break is the halfway point. Can you? How do you, as a fan, get behind that? You don't, but in Tampa, they already don't get behind them, so. Yeah, but they're going to get behind Why them less. Why would they want to <laughs> do that? They already get behind them less. Have you no, seen their attendance? I have, but now there's, there's going to be none. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I, if, I, if I, like, I love baseball, I would be there if I was there. Now, here's my now, question. Now, I don't know how. What about when they make the playoffs? How's that work? I'm just going to say one this. had more attendance. I'm going to put this out there. So, Montreal. I know Montreal would show up. They've shown they'd show up for a baseball game before, especially now after not they having They would initially. For so long. Yes. I don't know about Yeah, but Vlad Jr's not on the that team. line. I think if I think if they end up, end up like sustaining what they're doing right now even though I don't think it's possible. I think the numbers in the second half in Montreal would showcase the MLB why the team just needs to straight up move. And I think that's why they're exploring the two city team. Just move. Exactly. <laughs> but I don't think the MLB wants to move a team to uh, Montreal yet, and I don't think they want to move the Rays. Well, they can't move them right now. They can't move them to after 2028 20, or something? Like, they're just exploring it right now. I don't know exactly how that works. I don't think it's like they cannot. I think... They have they signed a contract or whatever to play their yes, games. Yes, but that can be bought out. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the what the criteria is there, you know? I don't know. I just the way that is being made seemed to me the way I read it was yeah. they're exploring it, but it's not even possible yeah. for them to do that until then. It's a very slim possibility. I just I think it's stupid. I, I don't know uh, what's the point. I mean, I guess what who cares about Montreal that much? What Herb Canadians? said makes sense. I mean, I guess if you want to, but just play like ex, like exhibition games. Yeah, like which different I mean, teams. They have. they have. Yeah, but I'm yeah. like I'm saying like regular season though. Like, let teams go there for a game or you something know or a series. Do. do it with the Nationals because they came from Montreal anyway. Yeah. Do that. I remember when the Nationals first became a team. I barely remember that. Have they been in that stadium since? Or did they have a stadium before? <sighs> I can't imagine they were on their second stadium already. Well, I think, they, I think they were building that one in the first couple of years they hmm. were playing. Played it at T-ball. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Go back to the Devil Rays if you're going to do anything. Please. Those uh, those jerseys were great. Throw bike. <laughs> also, Denardo 
technically you should be buying your own because you lost the Jack Johnson bet. So you have to give us your money. For what? A uh, shirt. Oh. Yeah. So, there. He still doesn't ha- have his because when he came here, I paid for his Permanis. That was that oh. was a, that was the trade off. Oh, why'd you pay for his permanis? Because I didn't send him a shirt. Oh, he mm-hmm. PayPal'd me for a shirt and I never sent it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it and then he kept reminding me. Which shirt? I think it was a trust the button process one. Smitty's mm-hmm. been exposed. Yeah, <laughs> horrible friend. I don't always send out shirts exposed. Are well, you not a prospect? <laughs> 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 You'll get it when you get it. I just sent out <laughs> two. It was a, I think it was the first two shirts I've sent out. I sent out a hat and now two shirts. Yeah. Hmm. Both to not prospects. <laughs> so what shirt did Resnick want? Once? Just the normal one. Oh, our logo. Okay. Yeah. And he's coming back here? Yes. Uh, we'll talk about that after. Yeah, I don't know why. We're talking about that on here. Yeah. Anybody that wants to meet the mini, mini stadium guy, though, can yeah. go I mean, out he, to the Miracle League yeah. South Hills thing that they do. So. There's potentially another thing, too, but we'll um, talk about that after. Okay, well... I think that's about it then. Is it? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Um, thanks again to Quinn for coming on. Uh, looking forward to see what the future has in store for him, uh, both personally and as for the Pirates as he gets here. Yeah. Um, we may, have to, we may have to make, Well, we <laughs> may have to make a trip well. to Greensboro. <laughs> uh, whoa, <laughs> Greensboro. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, thanks for watching. If you're watching but not following, hit that follow button. If you're feeling generous, we already got three subs today. You know, uh, we'll just say two thirds of those are in the room right now, but <laughs> I, I'm not one of them, so no. figure it out. <laughs> um, you can subscribe to us uh, if you have Amazon. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe for free. If not, very minimal cost, folks. So, uh, if you're just listening to us, thanks for listening. You can head on over to Twitch.tv/slash Around the Four One Two and follow us and watch us live each week as we do this and. Communicate like we saw a lot with uh, North Shore 9 and Trash Cats here. Have your own chats with other people in the chat. Yeah. Um, Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, until then, we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, Panini, don't you be a meanie. Thought you wanted me to go. Why you trying to keep me teeny?